Welcome back everyone to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. I'm a board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. And on this channel, we talk about everything related to lifestyle, to nutrition, to longevity, and of course, my favorite, kidney health. Now, today's topic is something that you're all familiar with, but it's a different way of looking at things. There's a new sort of diagnosis that's not really new. It's just a different way of looking at things. The, the title of today's talk is CKM. You may not be familiar with it, but the components are all things you know, you understand. CKM stands for cardiovascular kidney metabolic syndrome. Now, you're probably wondering, well, we, we all already knew that. What's new about it? CKM is incredibly important for you to understand because up until now, we've looked at all three of these entities as separate entities and never looked at it as a coordinated one single disease. And that's exactly what it is. It's one single disease. Cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, and metabolic syndrome or diabetes, etc., is one single disease that occurs in people. Too often we have specialists that look at their own disease and only their disease. But we need to get away from that and start to look at the whole person. And that's exactly what we're talking about. This concept of CKM is the concept that in our bodies, there's this overlap of diseases that's occurring. And we need to get all of these specialists on the same page, looking at these diseases together. And so this overlap of heart disease, kidney disease, and metabolic syndrome is occurring in people at the same time. And we need to treat it as one entity, as one people. So the American Heart Association is classifying CKM essentially as five stages. Stage zero, which is no risk factors. Stage one, which is essentially having some excess fat in the body, which a lot of people already do. Stage two, which is having metabolic risk factors and early stages of chronic kidney disease. Stage three, which is subclinical cardiovascular disease in CKM syndrome. And then stage four, which is clinical cardiovascular disease in CKM syndrome. So let's dive into each one of these five stages, stage zero through stage four, and kind of focus on what you want to think about in each stage and also try to see what are the things that if let's say you are in stage one through four, what can you still do? Because remember, no matter where you are in life, the first thing you got to understand is there is always, always hope. And that's the most important part of this. There's lots of four letter words. Most of them are bad, but hope is a four letter word and it is beautiful. Just like self is a four letter word and it's beautiful. So let's start with stage zero. Stage zero is where essentially you don't have risk factors. And if you're there, that's wonderful. And what you want to understand is this is the place. And if you're lucky enough to be there, you want to start with preventative factors. What are those? We call that our self principle. You got to sleep seven to nine hours. And remember, seven is the bare minimum and it's seven quality hours, which means most of you really need eight. So in other words, if you're sleeping seven, but you're tossing and turning, you're probably sleeping closer to six. That's not enough. You got to up that. You got to get closer to about eight so that you're getting that quality sleep. You're lowering that inflammation. You're getting into stage four. You're getting into REM. We're going to do lots of talks about the sleep cycles, the basic fundamental videos on sleep. So you guys learn about those basics of sleep that I think it's so easily forgotten. Exercise. It's very simple. Nothing fancy. You don't need equipment. Just get out there and walk. You can start with walking. Find some hills. Just walk. Every chance you get, park further away. I know it drives my wife nuts, but every time I go to like Costco, I'm so afraid people are going to dig my car. I park as far away from people as possible because I love the idea of walking. Every aisle I can find, I try to walk more. Love is simple. Practice gratitude. Practice kindness. I know, especially today, it seems like the world is just bad. But you know, as long as you're around, you can still be the light in the darkness. Do some good. And lastly, for food, you don't have to be perfect. Just eat more plants. Forget about the diet wars. Nobody cares. Just eat more plants. That's all it is. And then if you are in stage zero 
It's especially important is when was the last time you got your blood pressure checked? When was the last time you got your cholesterol checked? When was the last time you had your blood sugars checked? If you hadn't, today may be a great day to set up an appointment with your doctor and get those basic screenings done. And if you're in stage one and you do have some extra weight, just remember, it's a great idea to focus on losing a little bit of weight. You know, people talk about the 5% goal of losing weight, but even losing as little as 2 to 3% of weight can make a difference. 5 to 10% is where there's the greatest return on investment, but let's not discount getting up and moving. Let's not discount cutting back on alcohol. Let's not discount cutting smoking. Let's not discount the fact that every change leads to bigger and better change. So anything you can do that can start you on the right track is awesome. And if you have a little bit of extra weight, if you have some pre-diabetes or some glucose intolerance, just getting started makes a difference. So if you're in stage one, you still have tremendous amount of hope. But what if you are in stage two? What if you have some metabolic risk factors and you know you got a little bit of chronic kidney disease present? If you do, same exact thing. Don't wait. See your doctor. Let's treat that type 2 diabetes. Let's treat that high blood pressure. Let's treat that chronic kidney disease. Let's make sure that you're getting in there because the biggest thing in stage 2 is we need to slow, prevent, or even get some regression of the diabetes, of the high blood pressure, of the cardiovascular disease. All of those things is what matters in stage two is if you have those things present, we got to stop it and we got to try to regress it. And with stage three is where a lot of people, you'll see that they have early asymptomatic cardiovascular disease that's starting to be present. They may have early chronic kidney disease or they may not even know that they have it. And sometimes the only way to find out is that they need to get a coronary artery calcium screening. This is controversial. But the bottom line here is, is how do you know if you have it? You got to get checked. But if you don't want to get checked or can't afford it or other things going on, the biggest thing is, is the therapy is really about doing the things. If you have the extra weight, fix it. If you have high blood pressure, fix it. If you have prediabetes or diabetes, fix it. You got to focus on the things you can control instead of worrying about the things you can't control. Because if all you do is worry, worrying will lead to stress. Stress will cause you to have difficulty sleeping. Lack of sleep will cause inflammation. Inflammation will lead to heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, which will lead to CKM, which will start this vicious cycle like a hamster wheel. And all you're going to do is make stage three go to stage four. So that leads to stage four. Stage four is really where you have cardiovascular disease. And it could be that you have cardiovascular disease with kidney failure, or you may have already had a heart attack, or God forbid you have heart failure, or you have end stage renal disease. And wherever you are, the goal here is, is we need to treat you as the individual you are. We need to individualize wherever you are, individualize your treatment, figure out what exactly is it that you need so we can treat you for you. We can treat you for the unique person you are, figure out the changes that you need, figure out the right medication you need specifically for you. So what that means is, is what is it that you need for the medications based on the side effects and so forth. And so what does that mean? Well, you may need ACE inhibitors, ARBs, SGLT2 inhibitors, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. Remember, they're steroidal. There's non-steroidals like uh, finrenone. So there's all these new medications. There's the GLP-1s. There's some very interesting data for drugs like the GLP-1 inhibitors in kidney disease that's coming out. So drugs like Ozempic are not just for weight loss. They may also be beneficial in heart disease. They may be beneficial in kidney disease. There's, of course, statins. And there's a whole lot of other things you can use. But in order to go to drugs, before you go to drugs, during you use drugs, after you use drugs, lifestyle will always be the key. And that means that if you're not relying on the self-principle before, 
during and after, you're missing 90% of the most important variable in your long-term success. So with that, I want to thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you got questions, if you got comments, please drop them in the comments below. If you got topics you want to hear about for next time, let me know. And as always, thank you so much for joining me on this journey to better health. I look forward to seeing you guys next time.